day. Okay. Okay, so then um, it's my great pleasure that uh, today we have uh, Victor Zilivano speaking in our seminar. So he's going to talk about a joint work with his uh, daughter Svetlana. And it's about uh, primitive recursive ordered fields and some applications. So please uh, go ahead, Victor. Okay, so good day, everybody. I hope that uh, you hear me because uh, there were now uh, there were just uh, uh, now some problems with uh, hearing Vasco. So but, uh, I can only hope that you hear me well. Uh, so and uh, um, I would like to I uh, would like first to uh, thank organizers for this possibility to give a talk. And um, as I already mentioned, uh, this is essentially a repetition of my talk in November in um, months of meeting. And uh, those who listen to that talk <laughs> will hear essentially nothing new. So this is a joint work with Svetlana Svetlanova from Kais. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, contents of my talk. So I will not read every, everything here, but to just mention that uh, the first half, uh, so it may be divided into two parts, I guess. Uh, the first one is essentially about uh, primitive recursive uh, uh, ordered fields, uh, essentially fields of reals. Um, so um, this is in the spirit. Uh, so this part is in the spirit of uh, in the spirit of uh, uh, computable structure theory. And uh, uh, this, uh, then I uh, uh, say some words about uh, uh, relation of uh, primitive recursive uh, fields of reals uh, to the field of all primitive recursive reals. So this is a a small step uh, in the direction of computable analysis or computability in analysis. And um, then I consider some, uh, some small applications of, uh, of uh, results above to uh, computations uh, in linear algebra and to differential equations. Uh, and the approach of uh, computable analysis. Uh, so first, uh, uh, I uh, say some words uh, informally. So um, this work uh, continues uh, um, a couple of our pre uh, our previous work with Svetlana uh, in uh, in a rather old work uh, uh, in a rather old paper. We uh, have noticed that uh, the relation uh, some relation of computable ordered fields of uh, uh, real numbers. Uh, to the field of all computable reals. And uh, we use this uh, to prove computability of some problems in algebra and analysis, which are uh, non-computable um, on the whole, uh, on the uh, set, on, on the set of all reals. Uh, so this is the, that was about general computability. And uh, uh, we were of course uh, interested in uh, more feasible computations uh, and uh, uh, relatively recently we uh, tried to we uh, uh, looked at uh, polynomial time computability and uh, used uh, some uh, works uh, uh, on uh, computer algebra uh, based on some work on computer algebra first uh, uh, me and uh, Pavel Alayev uh, uh, have shown uh, that uh, the uh, field of algebraic reals uh, has a polynomial time computability and also that some, um, some problems uh, like uh, uh, root finding uh, is uh, some restricted versions of root finding are also polynomial time computable. And after that, uh, we, with, uh, based on this result with Alive, uh, we with Svetlana uh, just uh, tried to uh, to prove uh, some uh, some uh, more feasible version of uh, these earlier results uh, about well they, uh, ideally it would be about polynomial time computability but uh, it uh, has not realized so we but we uh, have shown that uh, so, so that many problems are solvable in exponential time. Uh, 
so and uh, uh, and uh, uh, to this uh, to this point, uh, uh, with us had the two extremes: polynomial time computability and just general Turing computability. And among them, there is of course a huge gap, and uh, which should be filled somehow. And um, a natural uh, um, next candidate is of course primitive recursive. Uh, Plus of all primitive recursive functions. So in this work, we look at primitive recursive computability and, uh, and try to, uh, to build something similar to this earlier work. Uh, so, um, and uh, uh, we were not the only one who uh, uh, were recently interested in primitive recursive uh, computability. So somehow, independently also, um, uh, some people uh, were interested in uh, primitive, in, the, in developing a theory of primitive recursive structures. Uh, 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 and um, uh, in the work uh, of Bajen, of several authors, Bajenov, Kolimulin, uh, Melnikov, uh, Downey, uh, uh, they have shown that uh, primitive recursive uh, structures are uh, rather important uh, in understanding uh, um, so-called uh, uh, online computability. I will not go into details. So this is a, a relatively um, applied fields, but in the context of uh, um, computable structure theory, uh, this, uh, this uh, a short series of work of uh, the mentioned authors was devoted to uh, this uh, online computability, uh, online uh, computable structure theory. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, it is well known that primitive recursive solvability of some problem yields uh, uh, an algorithm which does not use uh, exhaustive search, uh, uh, search through uh, accountable structure, right? Uh, so, um, uh, so uh, if we uh, show that some problem has a primitive recursive algorithm, it means that we have a program for um, uh, uh, solving the problem without these unbounded operations like while do or repeat until or the context of recursive uh, functions mirror operator. So already uh, in, the, in this case of primitive recursive computability, uh, there is a, a possibility to count working time of uh, algorithm, of an algorithm, right? Although, for upper complexity bound for such algorithms are of course uh, awfully large and uh, uh, so, so you cannot speak about uh, about uh, feasibility of such algorithms. Well, this is a principal improvement compared with general computability where estimation of uh, uh, computational resources uh, is uh, impossible in principle. So, um, and uh, even as stressed by Bajanov and other people mentioned uh, earlier, uh, primitive recursive uh, presentability of a structure in just uh, sometimes uh, may be improved even to polynomial time presentability. So in a sense, uh, methodologically primitive recursive may be even closer to, uh, to complexity theory than, uh, than to general computability in some respect. Okay. So, and uh, we, we have chosen this because, uh, because, uh, um, uh, because uh, it's technical, of course, much easier than uh, complexity classes uh, from Studied in complexity theory, and but uh, uh, it, uh, primitive uh, computability, uh, primitive recursive computability, uh, has the advantage that it has uh, much better closure properties and uh, different uh, mathematical construction. So it is a very reasonable class. Okay, so and um, in this work we uh, really uh, succeeded to, to uh, obtain uh, primitive recursive versions of. Uh, 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 some results mentioned in the beginning uh, and uh, 
uh, also um, establish some applications to linear algebra and analysis. Uh, so in particular, we uh, will find the primitive recursive version of uh, Yershov medicine theorem uh, on uh, computable uh, real closure of a computable uh, of field and uh, uh, give uh, um, sufficient condition for primitive recursive root finding of polynomials. Uh, propose uh, uh, um, notions for primitive recursive computability in analysis. So I tried to I tried to look at literature, but uh, maybe even it was not written down before, though it's rather straightforward. And then obtain uh, and uh, then obtain some new results on. Uh, on differential equations. So, and uh, uh, I, uh, I will comment that uh, um, this primitive recursive uh, case is different, uh, is, is very different from general computability in its properties and also in this uh, polynomial time or exponential time, uh, what I mentioned. So the object, all the objects became of course quite, uh, quite in a different way also in this context. So, and uh, yeah, so, and uh, uh, in, in programming terms, um, uh, in, in informally, uh, our results uh, um, uh, tells us, uh, tell us that uh, uh, we identified some important mathematical tasks which may be programmed without those uh, aforementioned uh, unbounded cycle operations. So, so there is some, some programming uh, meaning in this result. Okay. So uh, now uh, I go to a more uh, formal part of my talk. And uh, mm, this slide, I, uh, I um, mm, recall definition of a, um, uh, of computer of a computably presentable structure, uh, algebraic structure. So I use this uh, Russian or Novosibir terminology, which uh, was introduced by uh, Maltsov, Anatoly Ivanovich Maltsov. So it says that uh, if we have a structure, countable structure of a finite signature, then, uh, well, Maltsev used uh, this name constructivized, but uh, I'm not sure that it is uh, very good because, yeah, because of constructive, uh, constructivism. So it's something different. But um, so uh, the structure is constructivizable in miles of sense if there is a numbering uh, beta of the universe of the structure such that all signature predicates uh, and functions and also the equality predicate are computable with respect to this uh, numbering. So such a numbering is called a constructivization of beta and uh, the pair consisting of the structure and the numbering is called a constructive structure. So essentially it's the same uh, first notion uh, as uh, the equivalent uh, American, <laughs> so to say notion of uh, computerly presentable structure. It's nothing new in this slide. On this slide. Okay, so and um, a primitive recursive version of uh, this notion was already introduced by Maltsev uh, in 1961, uh, the same paper, and it is obtained from this definition just by uh, uh, taking a primitive recursive uh, instead of uh, computable. Right. So just I, I write down more systematically some definitions. So we use this. Uh, terminology of numberings. Uh, so if we have two numberings, beta and gamma, then beta is uh, primitive recursive reducible to gamma if, uh, if uh, we can find the names of objects in gamma primitive recursively from their names uh, in uh, beta. So, and the beta is equivalent to gamma, uh, primitive recursively equivalent if uh, beta is re uh, reducible to gamma and uh, vice versa. So if we have some numbering of a set, uh, a relation is uh, uh, primitive recursive uh, with respect to this numbering, 
if uh, this uh, predicate on the natural numbers is primitive recursive, uh, similarly for functions and a structure is primitive recursive constructivizable if there is a numbering such that, so just the same as uh, the previous slide, but only for uh, primitive recursive computability. So um, maybe just uh, uh, one comment uh, uh, about this. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, there is a notion, uh, well, um, in uh, uh, this work by Bajenov, Downey, Kalimulin, and Melnikov, they have noticed that uh, this notion uh, uh, maybe have some defects uh, because uh, um, uh, it is uh, in some in some sense more natural uh, to consider um, uh, only structures. Uh, uh, well, if we uh, if we go to this Western terminology, um, so if we take structures with the universe amica, all natural numbers, right? So uh, so the, so to say, element then elements of the structure appear just without delay. In a sense, right? Uh, but uh, in the context of our paper for fields of characteristic zero, it's easy to see that uh, uh, Matsev notion is uh, equivalent to this uh, notion, uh, this more modern notion, online primitive recursive computability. So for, for us, it's the same, and um, just. Uh, Definitely, everybody, everybody at this audience know what what primitive recursiveness mean. But uh, just uh, for completeness, I also uh, recall uh, the uh, definition of primitive recursive uh, function. So these are functions uh, which are obtained from distinguished function. This uh, constant zero function uh, plus one function and uh, this. Uh, projections uh, by repeated applications of uh, superposition operator and a primitive recursive operator, right? So you have only, so any primitive recursive function is represented by a correct term uh, in the partial algebra of functions uh, of uh, natural numbers, correct uh, in the sense of parity of functions. But uh, no, uh, there is a very nice characterization due to Raphael uh, Robinson, uh, which uh, characterizes unary primitive recursive functions uh, without this, uh, without uh, this, uh, uh, without uh, taking care about correctness of terms and things like that. So these are just functions which, uh, uh, so unary primitive recursive functions uh, may be uh, defined as functions which uh, are obtained uh, from. Uh, uh, the functions uh, plus one and uh, this strange function n minus uh, square root of n uh, uh, integer part uh, and square. So difference of n and this uh, and this thing. So, and uh, uh, this is primitive recursive and uh, all functions which are obtained from um, S from functions S and Q uh, using uh, the operations of uh, sum of uh, summing functions of composition of unary function and of uh, iteration uh, iteration uh, operator. Uh, we obtain in this way precisely the uh, unary primitive recursive functions and it is technically uh, quite uh, quite useful. Result. So sometimes we call this uh, structure uh, Robinson uh, Robinson algebra. <coughs> Okay, so uh, now uh, I uh, uh, so I uh, go to uh, uh, first uh, uh, non-trivial uh, result of uh, our paper, uh, so which uh, um, says something about uh, primitive recursive version of Artin Schreier uh, theorem. Uh, this is a classical algebraic fact uh, that. Uh, asserts that for any ordered field, there exists uh, um, an algebraic ordered extension of this field, uh, which is real closed. Uh, that is uh, every, 
uh, well, almost every polynomial, <laughs> well, I, I will not go into detail, but uh, uh, most polynomial, well, most polynomials uh, uh, in, with coefficients uh, here, it have roots already here. Almost uh, algebraically closed, but uh, uh, you remain uh, among ordered fields, which are never algebraically closed. So, uh, uh, Gershoff and independently Madison in uh, at the end of 60, uh, 60s uh, approved a, a computable version of the Art and Schreier theorem, which uh, sounds uh, that uh, if uh, this structure A is constructivizable, then uh, its uh, uh, real closure. Uh, is also constructivizable. So it's a complete uh, constructivization of this result. So it's essential, it's uh, natural to ask whether um, whether primitive recursive version of Yashov Madison theorem holds, right? So we might search uh, for such an analog, but uh, we're not able uh, to, to prove uh, the complete, uh, uh, complete analog of this because uh, uh, their proof uh, just uh, uh, do not apply directly. So, and uh, uh, we um, have proven this only for um, uh, for a rather restricted class of uh, uh, ordered fields, uh, which we call uh, PR Archimedean fields. So, uh, we uh, we define uh, such a field as an ordered subfield of the reals of the reals so uh, such that uh, there is a primitive recursive function f which uh, bounds uh, uniformly uh, every element of the structure so alpha is this constructivization right so uh, since uh, we uh, consider uh, in this work only Archimedean fields, uh, we stick just to subfields of reals uh, because uh, uh, it is uh, sufficient to consider such a such field. Okay, so and uh, uh, this uh, this is a meaningful notion, and uh, uh, they. Computable version, uh, the computable version of this notion is void because uh, every uh, every computable ordered subfield of reals um, is uh, computably Archimedean. So there is a uh, there is always a computable function f with this property, but uh, it's not uh, always that uh, primitive recursive function exists. So we were able to establish uh, the analog uh, of uh, primitive recursive analog of Yershov and Madison theorem only for such fields. So uh, theorem uh, first uh, our first result uh, um, states that. If we have a primitive recursive uh, Archimedean subfield of reals, then so is also real closure, which consists of all uh, uh, real roots of polynomials with coefficients in this in these fields, right? And this is some canonical canonical numbering, which uh, is constructed from alpha. Well, essentially, as medicine have done, uh, it can be done for arbitrary field, but uh, for arbitrary ordered field, uh, as medicine have noticed. But uh, 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 this uh, primitive recursive version also only works uh, for such primitive recursive Archimedean fields. And uh, I, uh, so just a couple of words about uh, the proof of this theorem. So um, in order to prove results, uh, so technically results of this paper are uh, pretty easy. In, in principle, there, uh, there is no proof using say priority method or some deep computability theoretic facts. Uh, so essentially, uh, first, we uh, know that uh, um, uh, uh, majority of results uh, 
in uh, about fields, uh, take uh, uh, about computable fields uh, uh, called primitive recursive. So you just uh, just read the text uh, in algebra and just see that most of them uh, hold primitive recursively. But uh, this theorem is not uh, completely automatic. Uh, automatic. So uh, and. Uh, uh, our proof uses some uh, some tricks uh, which uh, were invented in the context of uh, computable algebra. So, for instance, we exploit uh, this Sturm theorem and uh, just uh, um, just uh, show that this uh, uh, primitive recursive Archimedean, the property of being primitive recursive Archimedean, uh, just um, suffices to isolate uh, roots of polynomials with coefficients on the right. And then using some uh, facts about resultants, for instance, uh, there are, it, it can be proved by different means, but um, uh, using some results of uh, resultants, uh, you can just check, uh, check that uh, uh, you really can uh, find this, isolate those roots primitive recursive. Okay, so now uh, what about uh, uh, a root finding of polynomials? So, so um, uh, uh, we say that uh, a computable field that has computable root finding. If uh, given a polynomial, one can compute uh, uh, the list uh, possible, possibly empty, a list of all the roots of this polynomial. Right. So, and uh, uh, just uh, the question is uh, again: uh, when, uh, for which fields uh, uh, we can uh, find this list of roots uh, primitive recursively? So, um, by an old fact due to Frolic Shepherdson. Uh, uh, um, Mm, computable field uh, has computable root finding, if and only if it has computable splitting property, which means that uh, given any polynomial uh, uh, over B, uh, you can uh, computably uh, find its, uh, uh, its uh, canonical decomposition to, uh, to Uh, okay, and uh, uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, just uh, by uh, by looking at the proof of uh, frolic shepherdson theorem, uh, we can um, we can check that um, yeah uh, we can check that uh, uh, the same holds for primitive recursive. Uh, a primitive recursive field, uh, so here not only like median, just arbitrary. Arbitrary primitive recursive field uh, uh, has uh, uh, primitive recursive root finding, uh, if and only if it has primitive recursive splitting to this uh, irreducible polynomial. Sorry, I have forgotten this word before. Irreducible polynomials. Okay. So this is uh, these are just uh, equivalent properties for arbitrary field. Okay. Mm, now, uh, now uh, we mm, formulate uh, uh, some mm, sufficient condition uh, for uh, when uh, when some fields uh, uh, just uh, uh, satisfy this uh, primitive recursive root finding. So by this PRAS, uh, P-R-A-S, um, we develop, we, we denote, uh, we denote uh, the set of, uh, uh, we denote the set of uh, constructivizations of some subfield, right? Which is primitive recursive, uh, Archimedean, and uh, with the splitting property, or equivalently with the root finding property, right? 
So if we have such a constructivization, then this canonical uh, real closure uh, also have a primitive recursive root binding. And also algebraic closure, um, a, bar, a bar, which is obtained from this, uh, uh, this real closure just by usual Gauss construction, just uh, to add imaginary imaginary unit and uh, all, all the stuff. So it's essentially the set of pairs, set of pairs of these numbers. Or, or so in just uh, in other, in other so in other term, we see that this operator on, on constructivization, which, uh, which uh, um, associates with any um, such uh, constructivization, this uh, canonical real closure, so uh, this class is closed under this uh, um, uh, primitive recursive real closure. Okay, so it also uh, not immediate, not completely immediate. You have to look at uh, use some some standard algebraic proofs, but uh, rather carefully. <laughs> I guess it's not completely immediate, but easy. Okay, so <clears throat> now um, uh, we came to this equator between just the primitive recursive ordered fields and uh, just uh, now we make a step uh, to computability and analysis in some sense. And uh, the first, uh, the first uh, thing is uh, just to, um, To, uh, to compare uh, these primitive recursive uh, fields of reals, uh, uh, ordered fields of reals with the field of all primitive recursive reals. Here I just uh, recall our, um, our um, first result in this direction. Um, uh, we um, have no... Noticed uh, long ago that uh, uh, B, which contains uh, this finite set, so every every finite set of computable reals may be included in computable uh, computable uh, ordered subfield of reals. So, and in particular, uh, it implies easily that uh, the union of all computable real closed uh, field of real numbers uh, just coincides with the field of all computable real numbers. Okay, so we uh, just look at primitive recursive analog of this and uh, uh, the primitive recursive analog of computable real numbers is uh, well known in the literature, just a very old uh, notion. Uh, so, uh, I just recall, uh, recall the definition that a real number A is primitive recursive if it is, uh, if it is the limit of uh, some primitive recursive sequence of uh, rational numbers, which is past Cauchy. That is, it satisfies uh, this equality for all N. So, um, and, uh, 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 so we have uh, uh, we um, so at this point I would like to mention that uh, uh, this uh, field uh, was uh, recently shown by Peter Kerkling in an unpublished work that this is a real closed field. It will be important uh, later uh, in applications. So and. Uh, uh, we again establish uh, only partial analogy of this uh, uh, fact about uh, general computability. Uh, namely, uh, every primitive recursive ordered field of reals is a subset of uh, this big field, so to say, yeah? uh, the field of all uh, 
primitive recursive reals. But uh, this time, the union of all such uh, primitive recursive fields is a rather small, <laughs> small subset of this set. So it's, it's not so perfect, uh, the relation between these two uh, things is not so perfect as in for general computer BSD. Okay. So yeah, and uh, maybe I also mentioned it is uh, not formulated in this slide that this field of all primitive recursive reals is not computably presentable. This is an old result by Hisami. Nazif, by Nazif Hisami. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, it is easy to formulate uh, uh, a criterion. Uh, uh, which is uh, precise formulation is omitted of when a tuple of uh, primitive recursive reals may be adjoined to a given primitive recursive Archimedean field of reals. So there is a, a rather small, uh, a, a rather easy condition which uh, uh, just describes which tuples of uh, elements uh, from here can be added to a given. Uh, partial ordered field to obtain a new <laughs> partial ordered field of reals. Uh, so, and uh, uh, from from this uh, from this uh, condition, which which is not formulated uh, explicitly here, uh, we can, we did use the following uh, result. Um, there is a uh, this. Rust field, this is primitive recursive, uh, Archimedean, and with splitting. Uh, so, this is a, a field of reals which has a constructivization from the corresponding class. Right? So, of arbitrary transcendence degree. Uh, so, there are a lot of transcendent numbers which uh, can be added to, say, uh, field of. Uh, Operational numbers. So uh, this is of some interest because uh, currently it is open that uh, uh, so there is no example of say polynomial time presentable field of reals which contains uh, at least one transcendental number. So it might be even that no transcendental number at all can be can be added uh, in order to get uh, to get uh, uh, real close to this. Uh, polynomial time, polynomial time presentable real close. Yeah, and uh, well, um, this uh, transcendence numbers uh, which uh, which can be added, they are of course artificial. They are constructed by some some diagonalization construction, uh, rather straightforward, I would say. Uh, but uh, uh, the question of uh, when uh, some um, distinguished uh, important uh, reals may be added in this way is uh, less obvious. We have essentially only one uh, non-trivial example that uh, the ordered field uh, if we if we get Euler number and uh, join it to a set of uh, uh, rational numbers, then it will be this uh, in this class, this field, right? Uh, and by uh, this theorem, which I formulated uh, before, uh, by this Yershov uh, medicine, its real closure will also be in this class. So, but it, this is such, we, we don't know analog of this uh, about pi. So uh, it, it seems rather natural because uh, uh, later we will speak about some applications say to differential equations and many of them have as coefficients, uh, this uh, Euler number or pi or whatever. <laughs> so such kind of results, uh, although can look quite interesting. But uh, they use some 
theory of transcendental numbers. So it's somehow related to number theory. And the, for Euler number, uh, the proof of transcendence is rather easy. And from this proof, it can be extracted. So, oh, and now we uh, uh, slowly uh, come to uh, uh, those applications. And I um, uh, first I mention uh, some um, uh, some uh, facts about, from linear algebra. So uh, uh, there are also other results of this uh, kind, but uh, I will I will formulate only two of them. Um, so um, it is well known that uh, eigenvalues. Uh, uh, of any symmetric real matrix uh, are real. So I recall that eigenvalue is the uh, are just the roots of um, characteristic polynomial of, of the matrix, right? And uh, by spectral decomposition of uh, 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 such a symmetric matrix, uh, we mean a pair consisting of two uh, tuples. Uh, so the first tuple is the uh, set of all the roots of all these eigenvalues, uh, the non-decreasing spectrum of uh, this matrix, right? Uh, that is all, uh, all the roots uh, just uh, taken with, with multiplicities. And uh, mm, uh, V1, Vn is a corresponding orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. Right. So, and um, a classical result uh, from linear algebra uh, says that uh, uh, any symmetric real matrix uh, has such a spectral decomposition. But um, based uh, on an uh, old fact due to Rerich uh, from the 1930s, uh, Martin Stigler and Vasco Bratka have shown that uh, uh, you cannot uh, find spectral decomposition of a symmetric matrix uh, computably. So you cannot compute the spectral decomposition. The problem is with these uh, eigenvectors because they depend the discontinuously on the matrix. So, and, uh, uh, so uh, we uh, establish uh, an easy, an easy uh, sufficient condition uh, when uh, you can compute uh, such spectral decomposition. Namely, uh, so this class, uh, this class of, uh, uh, subfield of reals is again uh, very important. So it's important in all subsequent results. So if we have such a constructive uh, constructivization, and if we have a symmetric uh, symmetric uh, matrix with coefficients from this uh, uh, real closure of the corresponding field, right? So then we can uh, even primitive recursively find the spectral decomposition of this matrix uniformly on N. So uniformly on N is interesting because uh, uh, this, uh, for a fixed N, uh, a similar fact uh, uh, hold even, uh, you can compute in, even in polynomial time, but only for algebraic matrices or algebraic reals, right? But here we have uh, we have this result primitive recursively uniformly on N uh, on the size of this matrix, all right? And uh, just uh, primitive recursively. So, and uh, for uh, further uh, applications also, there is a similar result about pair of uh, pairs of matrices. I don't go into details here. And also very famous uh, normal form for, uh, for a complex matrix uh, is a so-called the Jordan normal form. Uh, and uh, again, if we have this uh, um, uh, such a primitive recursive uh, Archimedean um, uh, field with splitting, right? Uh, then we take real closure, then we take algebraic closure, and we take any uh, complex uh, any complex matrix with coefficients in this field, right? 
then uh, we can primitively recursively uniformly on then find a Jordan normal form for this matrix. Uh, and uh, even this, uh, oh, this uh, uh, just uh, uh, transpose uh, 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 to find matrices uh, just co uh, Changes of coordinates, which uh, which realize this, uh, realize this equality. So, so some classical algebraic fact holds uh, primitive recursively for matrices uh, uh, so with such coefficients. And uh, now we go uh, to uh, differential equations. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, we. Um, uh, we uh, started all this uh, um, all this uh, uh, series of papers uh, um, because Svetlana made uh, her diploma uh, on uh, numerical uh, methods for solving such kind of uh, differential equations. So. Uh, uh, so-called uh, symmetric uh, symmetric hyperbolic uh, systems uh, of differential equations. So here U is a um, uh, unknown uh, vector function uh, of uh, a tuple of n functions, right? Um, uh, which uh, are defined uh, on uh, space variables x1, xm which range over um, a cube, uh, m-dimensional cube. And uh, uh, also there is an additional argument, uh, time argument. So these are space arguments, this is a time, a time argument, right? And we, um, we search for such a vector function uh, such that uh, this uh, differential uh, operator uh, taken on, on this function uh, is uh, coincides with some given function f of t x and uh, mm, uh, this initial condition uh, time t uh, at zero time we again uh, we also have some uh, some given function and uh, uh, so there is a huge uh, theory uh, around this uh, such kind of uh, such kind of differential equations and uh, mm, uh, for instance uh, uh, under some smoothness conditions on this phi and this uh, f, uh, there is a, a, a maximal domain of existence and uniqueness of the Cauchy problem. Um, the Cauchy problem. So this problem is called Cauchy problem to find such a function. So it exists and unique at some some domain, some maximal domain. So, and under some condition and smooth conditions on these initial functions, uh, this uh, solution depends continuously. This is a deep uh, fact from differential equations. So why uh, these equations uh, are uh, extremely popular in the literature? Uh, because they have a lot of applications in physics. So the, probably the first one who, uh, who uh, used uh, numerical methods uh, to compute to compute solutions for such equations was was Friedrich was Friedrichs, so who was a student of Courant. Uh, Godunov made a very good progress, so he invented a different scheme, uh, which is very efficient for uh, practical practical very efficient. So and. Uh, yeah, that's the reason why uh, there are books written about uh, such uh, such equations. So we were interested uh, uh, when uh, this solution, which exists and unique, is computable, in the sense of uh, computable analysis, right? So as usual, you can consider different uh, variants for uh, this. Uh, for instance, you can fix uh, fix uh, matrices and uh, just study how u depends on phi and uh, f. This is initial condition, this is right from side function, right? So can you really compute u from phi and f? And uh, 
and uh, uh, more complicated question is what if we uh, also uh, study um, dependence on these matrices uh, there's little is known about that okay and uh, okay and we studied this uh, uh, again first uh, for general computability we have shown that this is uh, computable uh, provided that first and second derivative of uh, those given functions are uniformly bounded uniformly bounded uh, and uh, uh, we also have shown that uh, the uh, uh, the operator which uh, which finds this uh, uh, domain of existence and uniqueness from matrices. It depends on the matrices. It is computable always. And uh, the solution operation is computable if we have um, uh, no uh, the cardinalities of uh, spectrum of, uh, of, of matrix A and uh, uh, so-called uh, matrix pencils. Uh, spares of uh, symmetric matrices. So, and uh, again, here eigenvectors uh, are not computable, as I mentioned uh, by the result of Ziegler uh, and Bratka. So, so in uh, this problem, so essentially all known algorithm use uh, this uh, differential scheme, and all of them uh, use uh, uh, computing eigenvectors. But this is not computable. So incomputable problem is uh, in, you see just in the problem. So, but uh, for this reason, uh, so this operator is computable only if we, if we, uh, if we uh, just uh, take matrices with coefficients in some small field, right? Okay, so, and now, oh, well, I think that I, just a bit out of time. Yeah. So I just uh, finish, uh, uh, try to finish uh, quickly. So um, just in order to study now primitive, so we had some results before about general computability and about uh, this uh, uh, exponential time computability, uh, but only with algebraic matrices, right? So now we would like to study what happens if those matrices are just primitive recursive, primitive recursive, and whether it's possible to um, whether it's possible to compute, uh, say, this operator primitive recursive. That's uh, that's the question. And uh, but for this uh, we have to we have to. Um, uh, define first what does it mean uh, to primitive recursively compute on the reals. So, and um, so it is rather straightforward, and the time is uh, it's, uh, going to the end. So it's uh, straightforward to uh, to define computability on the bare space uh, using this uh, Robinson uh, algebra. Right? It is it is well known. So so called primitive recursive operator. Okay, uh, so but uh, then we can uh, we can in the usual way consider Cauchy representations uh, and uh, say uh, computability on the reals is also is also straightforward and in fact also it is uh, it might be defined uh, uh, for metric spaces so. A reasonable notion of primitive recursive metric space uh, is also rather straightforward uh, using this uh, uh, these uh, admissible representations uh, and uh, and um, this Robinson algebra, right? So in in place, uh, so roughly speaking, in place of Turing machine, we take this Robinson algebra, this primitive recursive apparatus, and that's it. Okay, and the why it's important for us because uh, um, uh, because uh, computing with differential equations we work with functional spaces, and uh, so these are rather complicated spaces, and for this reason we uh, really need this uh, general notion. So, and now we have three results about primitive recursive uh, primitive recursive. Uh, um, Computability of solutions, which are in fact, uh, which are obtained straightforwardly, 
from uh, some of our previous results. Uh, so I will not go into detail of this uh, formulation. And uh, you, can, uh, you can see here that the matrices are taken, uh, taken over these uh, fields, okay. over these fields which are obtained by Hirschhoff medicine here. So essentially, that this is the case. So, uh, so precise formula. Well, it is it is rather technical. For instance, you can uh, you can uh, define uh, several uh, several norms and things like that. So it's technical but modular. Uh, previous uh, previous our results uh, and uh, and uh, modular this. Uh, the results, uh, the previous results uh, mentioned in this talk, it is uh, rather straightforward to show that uh, oper uh, operators uh, solving such differential equations are primitive recursive fact. Okay, and uh, so um, there is in fact, uh, uh, there is in fact a, a nice uh, interplay when, uh, so we study uh, the dependence of those matrices, uh, which are taken from such and such field. And this, uh, um, this uh, uh, implies some properties of solutions of, the, of such uh, a differential equation. So essentially that's what's going on. Okay. And uh, I had also uh, rather long, rather long uh, conclusion, but I I think I, um, I don't have uh, much time to comment on this and just mention that uh, this uh, our series establishes some interesting interplay between, between so-called symbolic computations, that is precise computations and numeric computations, right? So that's, that's why I find it. Uh, Interesting, though it does not, uh, of course, imply a really feasible algorithm for algorithms for solving such differential equations. So, probably I stop at this point. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your talk, Victor. Are there any questions? Please just uh, unmute your microphones and ask your questions if there are any. So first of all, I, I enjoyed your talk, even though I'd, I'd heard so. I have a question about the, um, an, a, the simplest non-Archimedean field I can think of would be to take some known uh, yeah. Archimedean field and then add a transcendental at, at, at the end. And yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that inherently looks as if it requires searches to figure out what, you know, what's even true about it. You need to find something such that for all bigger things, such and such is true. Right. Uh, th thank you, Julia, for this question. Uh, well, unfortunately, from the time of uh, writing a uh, preprint, uh, which I presented, just presented here, uh, me and also Svetlana had no time to, to look at such questions. But uh, this question is one of the first questions which we have to be asked about that. We have a long, <laughs> a long uh, sequence of open questions like that. So, but I don't know the answer right now. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But uh, most probably it's not, it, 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 it should not be complicated, I think. Yeah, I, I was wondering if maybe it doesn't even have a primitive recursive copy. Oh, primitive recursive copy. Oh, yeah. Don't know. Yeah, just because it, it seems to require searches to. It seems, but uh, you know, you have to formally prove this somehow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, right, yeah. There are, so I would say that uh, this paper still lacks uh, uh, counterexamples. So many counterexamples uh, need to be need to be uh, constructed here, right? But uh, you know, but uh, we decided to publish this preprint because some positive facts are interested on their own. Oh yes, yeah, cer certainly. So it seems that there is another question by Peter van M. de Bos. Yes, uh, nice talk. I'm
curious as far as the mechanisms on the background. To what extent are these results proven by using the observation that a um, function is primitive recursive if it is computed by a program which has a primitive recursively bounded runtime? Is that an essential ingredient in your meet methodology? Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's under the hood of your engine. <laughs> okay, then I have a more specific question. There is a notorious problem in concrete complexity theory having to do with determining whether a sum of square root expressions of rational numbers is positive or not. Do your methods have yeah. any way I would of say, approaching uh, that problem? Yeah, I would say it's precisely related to su such kind of questions, but not only for square uh, for square polynomials, but uh, with arbitrary polynomials. But this is uh, the essence of this: whether when you can primitive recursively find uh, the sign signs of the normal. Okay. Then thanks again. Thanks. So there is another question by Arno. Um, my question was um, re regarding the the um, pro proposition that the that the union of all primitive recursive subfields of the reals is a strict subset of the set of all primitive recursive reals. Right. Do you sort of do you have, have any kind of clear characterization what primitive recursive reals can show up in a primitive recursive subfield? Uh, yes, I mentioned this uh, sufficient condition, right? I mentioned this sufficient condition, but uh, mm, still. Um, uh, I don't understand uh, which, uh, what is the union of all primitive recursive ordered field of reals. I don't understand uh, uh, this set, so to say, explicitly. Yeah, there is some, there is some criterion of, uh, uh, I mentioned this at some, some point. Yeah, there is a criterion when a tuple or when a tuple of uh, primitive recursive reals may be adjoined. It's just what uh, what uh, um, Peter van M. de Vos mentioned. You just uh, have to um, have to compute uh, um, signs of polynomials uh, at such uh, um, at such tuples. Yeah. This are, these are precisely the tuples which might which might be adjoined to a given primitive recursive ordered field. And then, if you if you sort of yeah. start with something like the rationals, that is that is how you know what individual. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, precisely this. So there is some there is some criterion, but uh, still, well, I would I would like to understand this better. There is no, well, I don't feel that I have complete understanding of this. Okay, are there any other questions left? At the moment, I don't see any further hand signs. So then um, let's thank uh, Victor again for his uh, talk. Thank you very much for a nice talk. Thank you very much. It was nice to meet you all. And thank you for everyone. Uh, thank you to everyone for coming. Um, as usual, you can stay for social meetings, so to say, for chatting. Since we are a rather small group, I 
I don't know whether we need to create breakout rooms for this purpose or whether we can just stay in the forum. In any case, I will 